with recruitment and financing. Uh, can you really tell me that the Pakistani state doesn't know what's going on? Especially if they're being trained in military level combat tactics. So, you know, when we speak about uh, judgments and principles, why don't I hear a sharp European condemnation of these practices which have been going on for multiple decades? Does the world have to be concerned that there someday will be a war between India and Pakistan? I think the world has to be concerned that there is terrorism going on and the world often looks away. Uh, the world often feels it's not my problem because it's happening to some other country. I think the world needs to be concerned about how sincerely and strongly it takes up the challenge of terrorism. That India has a very complicated relationship with your neighboring China. Many people around the world are quite concerned that China might in the near future intervene militarily in Taiwan. Do you share this concern? I Look, I think there's a, a larger concern uh, which is uh, based on our experiences. Uh, we had agreements with China not to mass forces uh, uh, on our, in our border areas. Uh, uh, and uh, they have not observed those agreements, which is why we have the currently dead situation that we do. Uh, we had an agreement not to unilaterally uh, change the type of control, uh, which they have uh, tried to unilaterally conduct. Where else the status may change or not change? Uh, you know, I, I hesitate uh, as a foreign minister to predict publicly. I may have my own views uh, and assessments. Uh, but I certainly can share my experience. Uh, and my experience is that uh, written agreements were not observed. Uh, that uh, uh, we have seen levels of military pressure which in our view has no justification. China would say the opposite. They would say that uh, India uh, had not obeyed uh, different agreements. Uh, uh, but obviously... Uh, you, you uh, no, I think it's difficult for China to say that for this reason. Uh, the record is very clear because today, you know, there's a lot of transparency of satellite pictures. Uh, if you see who moved the forces uh, to the uh, border areas first, I think the record is very clear. So it's very difficult for China to say what you suggested they could. India will probably overtake China as the world's most populous country within this year. Is this fact of any political significance to India or is it just a mere statistic? You know, uh, it's, we'll, we'll know that when we reach there, won't we? Uh, because uh, we have never used numbers in that manner. Uh, maybe other countries have. Uh, uh, you will have a situation where the world's most populous country uh, is known among the permanent members of the Security Council. And what does it say about the state of when if that is the case? So, uh, so it's a kind of a both a yes and a no. It's partly a statistic, but I think it's a statistic which means a lot. For several years you have called for permanent seat on the, on the Security Council. What will it take from your point of view to this reform of the Council the election will become reality? Uh, the problem, I think, is that but uh, today enjoying the benefits of permanent membership uh, clearly don't, are not in a hurry to, uh, to see the form. Uh, I think it's a very short-sighted view, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, the credibility of the UN and frankly their own interest and effectiveness uh, is at stake. Uh, so, uh, my sense is uh, it will take some time, hopefully not too much time. Uh, I can see a growing uh, body of opinion among UN members who believe that there must be change. Uh, it's not just us. Uh, you have uh, entire Africa, entire Latin America, left uh, developing countries vastly underrepresented. I, I think the state of the world, this was an organization invented in 1945. It's 2023. And when you would have to guess for a year when this will happen, what would it be? No, I, I wouldn't guess because I know the complexities of this process. You know, it's, it's a tough one. I, I'll be honest with you. It's a tough one, but I don't think because it's a tough one, we should give up. Thanks so much for time. Uh, thank you. It's a great pleasure. Yes, I don't to join politics at all. But to me, as I said, it came as a complete uh, surprise that the Prime Minister could even consider me. People who claim to be internationalists suddenly become super nationalist. Uh, be, beware, beware of such people. And I ask people, if we were being accommodated, who sent the Indian Army to the LAC? Uh, 
China is an exception. And it is an exception. And three of this, I said China, C-H-I-N-A. There is a phrase, more by other means. There is also, think of it, this is politics by another means. So you think the timing, timing is accidental? I mean, let me tell you one thing. I don't know if you election season has started in India and Delhi or not, but for sure it has started in London and New York. Politics of India doesn't stop at its borders. Sometimes politics of India doesn't even originate in its borders. It comes from outside. Why suddenly, uh, you know, there's a surge of reports and, you know, uh, attention and and whips. I mean, why some of these things are not happening early? You had to make a documentary. Many things happened in Delhi in 1984. Why didn't we see a documentary on that? Namaste Jain, welcome to another edition of a Podcast with Smita Prakash. Today my guest is India's External Affairs Minister, Dr. S. Jaishankar. An illustrious career of 38 years as diplomat, Dr. Jaishankar was India's ambassador in China, the Czech Republic, USA, Singapore and then finally Foreign Secretary. He was picked up by Prime Minister Modi to be part of his cabinet in 2019 as External Affairs Minister. The articulate Dr. Jaishankar is my guest today. Dr. Jaishankar, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. You know, every podcast that I've done, uh, the comment section is filled with many wedding Dr. Jaishankar, many wedding Dr. Jaishankar. So today I'm really yeah, that's happy. That's me coming. <laughs> okay. I don't believe one word of that. So now I'm so glad and my team is thrilled that you're here with us today. And uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to get into the macro issues of policy matters and, and uh, you know, India's neighborhood and all in the second half of the podcast. The first half is basically a uh, curation of all that I've been seeing on the comment section when people said, please ask Dr. Jay Shankar this. So, um, the, the question which most people had was that how did the transition take place from, you know, being a bureaucrat, a career diplomat, to becoming a politician, joining Mr. Modi's cabinet? How did you make that transition? What tools did you employ? Uh, I didn't make the transition. It happened. I mean, uh, uh, it happened because uh, I come from a bureaucratic family. Uh, I don't have anybody in between the family who's entered any party at any time. Uh, it had not crossed my mind. I don't think it had crossed the mind of anybody else in my circle. And uh, then, uh, uh, when we look at what happened in May of 2019, now, uh, once I enter that city, I, I myself was very unsure. I had watched politicians all my life. One of the things you get to do in the foreign service world is you actually have much more than other services. You see politicians up to because you see them up to you know, you're kind of uh, working with them, uh, counseling them. So it's one thing to watch. Uh, to become a cabinet member, to stand for Rajasthan, because you know, when I was selected, I was not even a member of parliament. Uh, so, each of this kind of happened one by one. I slid into it sometimes without knowing it. You learned by watching others. That's something, you know, uh, we say sometimes you go to, uh, to any foreign environment, you kind of learn pick up by so I mean this wasn't a foreign environment but it was a different environment so you know uh, you looked at others more senior people more experienced people in the cabinet in the party in other parties I mean I even today just uh, say watch me in parliament I do follow a lot I, I look very carefully at what uh, people are doing both in my own party and other parties I think there's a lot to learn from everybody so, get into it step by step. Sometimes you surprise yourself. There is a there is a learning curve. I I'll be honest with you about that. There are times when you are a bit hesitant or a bit even nervous. But then you know you do it once, you do it twice. You slowly uh, you know stand up there. Reason people to make a speech. You know sometimes you know. Because if you look at the that is very good in terms of the to be the to the 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 Yes, uh, 
it it does help when you're a diplomat you in a sense of almost trained i would say uh, to get along to um, uh, you know uh, uh, get the most out of situations uh, some of it is also different people are made different different ways you know uh, uh, i will you would see i very rarely get into anything personal with people even when i You want me to follow you? No way, asshole. You bring that shit to me. Without strength, you can't protect anything. I know that. You're up, Nico.
chit chat or monologue? Just getting right to the point, huh? This demon. Something different about it.
Dante's friend. It's Lady. You know her? <laughs> From a gunsmith days. Uh. What? I <sighs> can't believe you do this to Kyrie. I'm gonna have to tell her, man. I'm joking. Hey, loosen up your jock strap. <laughs> Don't do anything I would do. Yeah. Kitty, it would kill me right now.